Hey everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of the Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. Handheld. This review was originally written by Damian McFerrin for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. Looking back on the history of Nintendo as a maker of video games, it's clear that the Game & Watch line was a significant step. Not only did it allow Nintendo's core developers to hone their skills with snappy, engaging titles, it also gave them the opportunity to evolve their hardware talents, coming up with innovations such as the famous cross D-pad and dual screen play, innovations that would later influence the entire industry, as well as future in-house projects like the DS and 3DS. Another equally important moment in Nintendo's history was the arrival of Super Mario Bros. in 1985, the game which, alongside Donkey Kong, is arguably responsible for establishing the Japanese company as a major player in the world of interactive entertainment. Given that 2020 is the 40th birthday of the Game & Watch and the 35th birthday of the game that took plain old Mario and made him super, it makes sense that Nintendo has chosen to celebrate it not only yet with another re-release of the famous NES title, but one that also pays homage to the earlier success of the seminal Game & Watch line. If you're over the age of 40, then you'll instantly appreciate the packaging Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. comes in, which is based on the box redesigns of the Game & Watch line from the early 80s. The unit itself is roughly the same size as the initial wave of single-screen Game & Watch titles. However, Nintendo is wisely not relying entirely on nostalgia to sell this thing. Those who weren't even born when the final Game & Watch model, Mario the Juggler, which arrived in 1991, will still want to get their hands on this device because it's highly collectible and looks great sitting on a shelf. It's also likely to rise in value over time as Nintendo has stated that it's a limited release. But only time will tell on that. The unit adopts the same color scheme as the Japanese Famicom and consists of a plastic shell and a gold metal front plate, another recognizable hallmark of the original Game & Watch line. The iconic cross D-pad, which began life on the Donkey Kong Game & Watch dual screen model from 1982, is present and correct, alongside two rubber action buttons, which again is another callback to the controls of the original machines. Three option buttons are located on the front as well. One allows you to select between the three games, Super Mario Bros., the Japanese Super Mario Bros. 2, and a version of Ball, the very first Game & Watch title from 1980, while another drops you to an animated clock. The third allows you to pause the game and toggle elements such as screen brightness and volume, as well as reset the current game. Unlike many of the original Game & Watch units, there's no kickstand on the back, which is kind of a disappointing oversight when you consider that the unit can be used as a clock. In fact, outside of the serial number and the usual compliance notices, the rear is relatively plain. There's no battery compartment, as was seen on the originals, because the unit is powered by an internal rechargeable battery, which is topped by using the USB-C cable included in the box. Battery life is estimated to be around 8 hours, although if you have the screen on full brightness and the volume set to full blast, you should expect less. The only other element of note is the mono speaker, which is found on the left-hand edge of the device. Because the layout of the unit is such a close match to the NES controller, playing these games is a breeze. If we had any criticism, it would be that the D-pad is positioned a little too close to the bottom edge of the device, but this really is a minor complaint. The pad itself is super responsive and a joy to use. The rubber buttons feel odd to those accustomed to hard plastic, but they possess a nice grippy texture which prevents your sweaty thumbs from slipping off during intense play. The unit's full-color LCD is bright and vibrant, just as you'd hope, but because it's not displaying the exact native resolution of the NES, it does give the visuals a somewhat soft quality. Viewing angles are mostly decent too. It's only when you tilt the unit downwards towards yourself that the image begins to invert its colors slightly, but when tilted in any other cardinal direction, the screen remains perfectly readable. The single speaker is pretty loud too, when you consider that it's mounted on the side and is rather dinky. Sadly though, there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Given that we're talking about games that are now over 35 years old, it should come as no shock to learn that the software emulation is rock solid, right down to the way that parts of the background music drop out to make way for sound effects at certain points due to the limited number of sound channels that NES possesses. Another nice touch is the fact that your progress is retained in-game even when you switch the unit off or toggle to another title, allowing you to pick up right where you left off later on if you decide the Mushroom Kingdom is getting a bit boring and you fancy a quick 
quick round of ball instead. Nintendo has made all of us very much aware that the fact that the unit's animated clock, which shows Mario dashing through an enemy-filled scene from the game, which shows the time in blocks, comes with 35 hidden secrets. And there's definitely an element of fun to be had discovering new hidden elements. Some of these secrets are relatively simple. Pressing A and B simultaneously causes the blocks to glow, for example, while another shows Mario doing a Michael Jackson-style moonwalk. But others are more dramatic and actually change the scene Mario is in altogether. We also love the way the unit has several special sleep screens, which appear just before it powers down after being left unattended for a short time. Of course, we could go and spoil more of the secrets, but that is half of the fun of this unit, so we'll leave the rest of those for you to find. Now from a hardware perspective, Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. is a lovely little device, which runs three games very well indeed. But that leads us to the single biggest problem we have with such a product. Why choose to limit the game's library to just three titles, when we know for sure that it's possible to include a host of NES ROMs? Super Mario Bros. is a stone-cold classic, that much is clear, but it would have been nice to have a few more Mario outings included, such as the North American sequel and even the third legendary NES installment, which ranks as one of the greatest 8-bit games of all time. Super Mario Bros. 2, also known as the Lost Levels, might be something of a curiosity for Western players, but it's basically a harder expansion of the original game and arguably isn't as interesting as the Western sequel. And why not include a few more Game & Watch titles? Ball is a nice way to reference the history of this handheld range, but it would have been nice to see other games, such as the Game & Watch version of Super Mario Bros. from 1986. It's highly likely that Nintendo plans to create more of these commemorative Game & Watch units as the anniversaries roll in, and given that both The Legend of Zelda and Metroid turn 35 next year, it's fair to say that we're about to enter a period in which Nintendo can comfortably roll out at least one of these every 12 months. Never a company to turn down the opportunity to make cold, hard cash by squeezing its fan base. It's perhaps naive of anyone to expect Nintendo to release a device like this and pack it to the brim with games. But even so, when you're paying $50 for a trio of ROMs which are available elsewhere already, ones that we've all purchased time and time again, it does seem rather tight-fisted, even by Nintendo's often Scrooge-like standards. Will our complaints matter though? Probably not. The unit has apparently been selling fairly well and we dare say it'll probably find its way into many Christmas stockings come the end of December. On paper, at least, it's the ideal gift for gamers old and young alike, thanks to the way it bridges the generations. If you're old and remember the Game & Watch handhelds, then you'll love the nostalgia factor. And if you're young, seeing Mario's early adventures unfold in their 2D glory will certainly be of interest. We can only hope that with the next Game & Watch release, which surely has to be Zelda related, right? Nintendo decides to include a little bit more content. And if not, then there's always the enviable hack, of course. If you're curious to learn more about the history of the Game & Watch or just want to get a little nostalgic, Go ahead and give our video on the entire history of the Game & Watch a look. 